Okay, so now we're going to do some file input and output, which is pretty key, uh, especially when working with biological data. A lot of what uh, coding boils down to is loading some data file that we either generated or downloaded, doing something for everything in the file, and saving the output to a new file that we then plot or uh, whatever. Okay, so uh, dealing with files in Python is very easy. It's one of the things that Python excels at. It's also very fast at doing this. And uh, the, the, basic, uh, the basic commands we'll need are the open command and the read line command. So here's how we open a file in Python. You call open, and then in quotes you give the file name, and then after a comma you give some permissions. We'll see these permissions in more detail, but the W means I want write permissions for this file. So I want to be able to write to this file. Uh, and that function, this open function, creates a file variable. So this is the only time that you refer to the file by its location on the disk. So what I mean by that is when you do open here in the quotes, you might put c colon backslash my document slash my file dot txt. And this is uh, the location of the file on the disk. So after that, after you've opened the file and given the full location in quotes, we now have this file variable created, and that's what we use to do all of the reading and writing to the file within Python. So when we write a line to a file or read a line to the file, we don't call the file c colon backslash my document slash my text dot txt, we call it file variable, and we do file variable dot read line or file variable dot write. Okay, so the, uh, the functions that people use to read and write to files are uh, dot read and dot read line. Dot read is not so useful for biological data unless you're working with sort of um, more binary data, you know, you might have a movie where you want to load a certain number of bytes of the movie or a sound file or something like that. But most of what we're going to be dealing with is going to boil down to a text file. It'll be some spreadsheet or some uh, comma separated value file that is all of our data. And for that type of data, the read line is much more useful. Just to introduce read, what read will do is it will read a certain number of bytes from a file. So the reason that's not useful for text is because you don't know how many bytes one line of your file might be versus two lines. You know, it depends what letters are in there. It gets very complicated if you try and use dot read. Dot read line will read a line of your file and return that line. So that's uh, what we use most of the time when we're going to read uh, input files. For output files, we use the dot write function the most. Dot write will write a string to a file. So you will create your output as a string and then you will call dot write on your file variable and it will write whatever string you give it to the file. These last two commands you're probably not going to use too much but I should introduce them. Um, they are dot tell and dot seek. So dot tell will tell you how far through the file you currently are. What I mean by that is there's sort of a bookmark that Python keeps as it goes through the file. So if you run dot read line, it will read the line and then move the position that Python is through the file to the beginning of the next line ready to read. If you then call dot read line again, it'll read the second line of the file. So there's this sort of imaginary bookmark that um, Python is moving through the file as it's reading it line by line. Uh, if you call dot tell, it will return how many bytes through the file you currently are. So you might find you've called read line three times and then you're 64 bytes through your file. And you can figure that out by using dot tell. It's not that much use on its own, uh, but you can combine it with dot seek to get back to a certain position in the file. So dot seek allows you to move that bookmark so that the next time you called read line, it starts from that position. It allows you to move it relative to the beginning, the middle, or the end of the file well, the beginning, the current position, or the end of the file. So if you call .seek with an offset uh, of zero, and the second number you give it is also a zero, it will move that bookmark to the beginning of the file. If you call .seek with an offset of 10, and then the second number is zero, it'll move 10 bytes from the beginning of the file. If you, uh, so this second number tells you whether you want to move relative to the beginning, 
relative to the current position or relative to the end. So if it's a 0, it'll be relative to the beginning. If it's a 1, it'll be relative to the current position. If it's a 2, it'll be relative to the end of the file. So if you want to uh, move from your current position 10 bytes through the file, you can do dot seek offset 1, comma 10. All this is not that useful for text data, but you can imagine if you combine it with tell, uh, you read 10 lines from your file, you know that you've come across the, the line you're particularly interested in, you can use dot tell to tell you that that is 27 bytes through the file. You can then, the next time you come to use your file, use dot seek to jump 27 bytes into the file and get back to that position. So it's, it's not that widely used. We're mainly going to be using uh, dot reline and dot write in our examples. Okay, so let's write a file. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use list comprehension to create a list, and then we're going to use dot write to write that list to an output file. So we're in the Python interactive environment here. You can see because we have the arrows at the start of the line. I'm creating a variable called my list, and I'm using list comprehension to create it. My list is going to contain x cubed for every x in range 1 to 11. And so we know now that that's going to do 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, and put them all into the my list variable. So the next thing I'm going to do is open a file using open. Remember this open is the only time we refer to a file using its location on the disk. So open output.txt will mean that I'm going to write my output to a file called output.txt in my current directory. And the W means I want write permissions. This is important because we're going to be writing to this file. There are other permissions which we'll see in a second. But for now we're just going to be writing to this file. And I've created a file variable called file using this open command. And then all I want to do is for item in my list, which will go through every variable in my list, uh, so every number in my list, all I want to do is do file.write. So notice I'm using my file variable and I'm calling .write on my file variable. And what am I writing to the file? Well, I'm going to write each item to the file, but I need to make sure I convert it to a string. So .write expects a string as the input. So if you were to just not cast it to a string and just try and write, it would give you an error and say that the type is incorrect. You can't call dot write on a number. You have to convert it to a string first using this str. So we convert each number to a string, and then we concatenate it with another string. We know that when we have a string, a plus, and then another string, it's going to glue them together. The other string that we're gluing onto the end is actually a new line character. This backslash n will give us a new line. So this way, if the first number is 1, it will put 1 on one line. If the next number is uh, 8, it will put 8 on the next line, etc., etc. And that's all we need to do. We have an extra enter here to tell us that we are done with our for loop. And then finally, I call dot .close. So when you call dot .close on your file variable, it will tell Python that we're finished writing to the file it will free it up for other programs to use, and it will prevent things like your file becoming corrupted or locked for, from, from other programs using it. It's important to call .close when you're finished uh, working with a file. So when you've run that, I want you to look in your current directory, and you should see an output.txt file that contains a bunch of uh, cubed numbers, hopefully separated by new lines. If you're working on Windows, you might find that you don't get new lines. And the reason for that is because the new line character in Windows is not backslash R, backslash N, sorry. It is actually uh, backslash R backslash N. So if you're working on Windows, you might want to change the backslash N into a backslash R backslash N like that. So if you get all your text on one line, you should give that a go. Okay, so you should see something that looks a bit like this. It will be in your home directory or wherever you're running Python from. And hopefully has everything on the new lines. So you'll notice the last line that I ran was dot .close. Uh, dot .close sort of tells Python that we're done writing to the file. 
and uh, make sure that it's available to open in other bits of software. It's important to close your files uh, just to prevent them getting corrupted. It's a bit like ejecting a USB pen drive. You know, if you pull it out without ejecting it, most of the time it's okay, but sometimes it just erases everything and you lose a bunch of work. So it, it's a good habit to get into to make sure you uh, close the, the file when you're done. Uh, there are a couple of methods to check whether it's closed. You can either call dot .closed on your file variable, and it will be true if it is closed, or false if it isn't, or you can just type the name of your file variable and it will tell you whether it's a closed file or an open file in the description it gives you. So that's a one way of checking whether your file is open or closed. So uh, when, when we're opening a file and writing something to it and then closing a file, uh, it can be a little laborious to do all those different lines. So you can actually use the with open command if you just want to write something small to a file and automatically close it when you're done. So if you do with uh, open, and that, that open command is the same as the opening command we had uh, previously. So we're opening text.txt with write permissions. But we do with open as file variable that will open the file, assign the file variable to the file, and then we can do things like write to it. So uh, after a colon, a new line, and an indentation, we do file variable.write. When we finish writing indented code, uh, Python will automatically close the file for us. So if we then check file variable, we see that it is closed. So the with open loop is useful just to write small things to a file without having to do file variable equals open, file variable dot close afterwards. So if you're just writing one or two things to a file, you can use with open. I wouldn't encourage you to do all of your file uh, reading and writing in a with statement, mainly because, uh, you know, when you're writing indented code like this, you won't know you've made a mistake until you get to the end of the indented code and you might have to retype a lot of stuff. So this is useful just for small bits of writing, but the main way we're gonna do uh, reading and writing to files is the way we did before. You will open the file and then when you're finished you will close it. Okay, so I, I mentioned that we have um, the W there which gives us write permissions. There's a few others, I won't go into all of them, but the main ones we're going to care about are reading, writing and append permissions. So if you have uh, an input file, you're probably only going to want to give it read permissions when you load it. This is important when you've generated a huge bunch of data from a next generation sequencing experiment or you've downloaded a big data set from the internet. You don't want a mistake in your code to accidentally overwrite all of your input data. So uh, I encourage you to open your input files with read permissions and then your output files that you're writing to can have the write permissions. And that way you avoid, if you make a mistake in your code, overwriting anything that's important to you. The uh, R is for read permissions, W is for write permissions, and there's also A, which will give you append permissions so that the data that's in the file is safe, but you're allowed to add extra things onto the end of the file. You might use that if you've successfully done some output, but you want to then write some more code to add some more output to the file. But mainly, the, the take home is read permissions for your input files, write permissions for your output files. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to read from a file now. We're actually going to read from the file we just created and see if we can read those numbers back into Python. So, again, we just need to open a file variable exactly the same way we did when we were writing to the file. So we do my file equals, and then we use open to open the file, and we give the file name there, the output.txt. This time I'm having read permissions. And the reason it's got read permissions is because we want to read from it and we don't want to overwrite all of our precious data that we just generated. So then I can call readline on that file. So I do my file.readline and I print the output. And the first time I run that, I will see the first line of the file printed back. The second time I run that, I should see the second line of the file printed back. So you'll notice with the readline function that I can call the same function again and again but what I see is different lines each time because Python is moving that little bookmark through the file and reading the first line the first time and then putting the bookmark at the end of the next line ready to start. So it's a bit like a typewriter, you know, when you've done one line, it's ready to write on the next line. 
So call read line a few times on your file and hopefully you'll see each line printed back. Uh, then you should call dot read and you should see the rest of the file printed back. The dot read will go from the current position all the way to the end of the file. When you've done that, call dot close. Make sure you put the brackets after the close. Don't make the mistake I did the first time I tried to do it here. If you don't put the brackets, it will just tell you that the close method exists and it's part of the file object. You need to actually put those brackets in to run the function. So read line will read a line from the file one at a time, then dot read will read all the way to the end, and dot close will make sure that file is closed up.